Hi, welcome to High Road. My name's Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to program a drum beat in Pro Tools using nothing but a mouse. This video is aimed at people who are pretty much total beginners at Pro Tools, so I'm going to take you through right from the beginning and try to leave no one behind. If you're a more advanced Pro Tools user, then this video probably isn't for you. All right, first thing I'm going to do is open up Pro Tools, there it is, and let that open up. I'm using Pro Tools 12, but if you've got something like Pro Tools First or another version, it's pretty much all the same. Okay, this is our dashboard screen where we need to create a new session. So I'm going to choose a location for mine, which is just going to be on my desktop of my computer. I'm going to call it Mouse Drums. And down here, we've got the things that we can choose the session features. So I'm going to choose WAV file. Well, not that I'll need it because this is just going to be MIDI, 16-bit. Uh, um, again, not that it matters too much, but 16-bit uses less processing than 24 or 32. So if you've got a slower computer or if you just want it to run quickly, 16-bit's good for that. 44.1 is pretty standard, and that's about all we need to do. I'm going to press Create. And this is a blank Pro Tools session. Now, again, if you're a beginner and you've never used Pro Tools, let me just show you around. This screen here is called the edit window and it's it acts a bit like a tape recorder. This is where all the tracks go and where you do all your editing. Just behind that is the mix window and this one acts a bit like a mixing desk. It's where you can actually change the sounds of each track and mix things and manipulate the audio a little bit. So the edit window is the one we're going to be using mostly today. This one down here is called the transport window or I guess the transport, and it's all your playback controls and that sort of stuff. They're the three main things you need to be able to get to. If one of these is not showing, then you can go up to the window menu, and this is where you'll find transport, and that's where you'll find the mix window or the edit window. Let's get started by making an instrument track. So I'll go to the track menu, press new, and these settings here, we want to create one new track. Mono is fine, it doesn't really matter uh, for this. Audio track is wrong. We need an instrument track for what we'll be doing today. And then you just press create. So that is a blank instrument track. This is where we can put MIDI instruments like pianos, drums, and uh, keyboard sounds. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger by moving my mouse to the bottom of the track and just dragging it down to enlarge it a little bit. All right, now if yours doesn't look like this, you need to get it looking like this. This column here is called inserts and it's where we actually put our plugins. If you don't have that, you need to go to the view menu and choose edit window views and make sure inserts A to E is ticked. And likewise with the IO, IO is short for in and out. That's a good column to have visible so that you can choose where the audio gets sent to. Also it does volume and panning. So now that my track is set up the way I like it, I'm gonna click on one of the empty insert slots and choose plugin, instrument, and I'm gonna go down here to expand too. Now you might see here, I've got lots of different instrument plugins. You know, I've, some of these I bought, some of these came free with Pro Tools. The one we want is expand two. Expand two comes free with Pro Tools first and pretty much every version of Pro Tools that I'm aware of. And it's more than just an instrument plugin. It's an entire library with hundreds of different instruments and sounds. We just want drums today. So if you found this video by searching for something like how to program electronic drums, then I'm guessing you're probably into electronic music and that's the kind of drum kit that you want to start with. So let's grab one. If we go to the preset dropdown, go to the drums folder, here you'll find dozens and dozens of different kinds of pre-programmed drum kits. Everything from natural drum kits, rock kits, metal kits, jazz kits, but you probably want electronic drums. So I'm gonna choose this one here called the house set. It's um, a little bit like an 808 drum kit, but the cymbals are a little bit more natural sounding. So we'll choose that. And now the drum kit is loaded in there. I can close expand. Okay, next thing is we need to configure the instrument track so it's best for programming drums with a mouse. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this uh, track a lot bigger. I'm gonna expand it out like that. You might notice here along the edge of the track I've got piano keys visible. Now in this view they don't do anything so I'm going to change the view. If I go over to the left here where it says clips, click on that and choose notes. Now the keyboard has actually changed and so has the the grid view next to it 
and it's a much more detailed piano keyboard. And if I go all the way down here to the key that says number one and click it, you can hear a kick drum. So that's the area of the keyboard we're interested in, the first octave from C1 up to just past C2. So I'm gonna use the arrows below to kind of put that in the middle. These arrows above and below the piano keyboard, these actually allow you to choose a range of the keyboard that's visible. So that's pretty handy, but those keys are very small and hard to see. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit. If you go over here to the right of the screen, there's these two lines in this little icon here. This is actually the MIDI zoom tool. If I click on the top half of it, it zooms me in. If I click on the bottom half of it, it zooms me back out. So let me zoom in once and I'll zoom in again. So that's good. That Now I can see each piano key more clearly, but I'm in the wrong range again. So I'll just move my arrows up. There we go. So I really need to be able to see from this note here, C1, up to about C sharp 2. Now if you don't know anything about music and you don't even know what the names are of the keys on a piano, this could be a little bit tricky. So I'll try to explain this with some overlaid graphics. Each of these keys from C1 to C sharp 2 is assigned a particular drum sound. The ones that we're most interested in are kick, which is on C1, snare, which is on E1, hi-hat, which is on F sharp 1, open hi-hat, which is on A sharp 1, crash, which is on C sharp 2, and all the white keys from D2 are the toms. So we've got our drum sounds, we've got our track set up the way we want it. Now we need to configure the grid view. Now if you look along the top of the timeline here, I'm assuming yours looks a lot like mine, you've got bar numbers written along the top. You can see bar 9, bar 17, bar 25, 33, and all the way down. Those numbers represent bars or measures of time. At the moment we're so zoomed out that we can't even see one bar of time very clearly. So we need to zoom further in. And we do that by going down to the right hand bottom corner and using these plus and minus keys. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we really just want to be able to see roughly four bars on screen nice and clearly. So that's too far. That's pretty good. So now I can see bar one, bar two, bar three, and bar four all on screen at the same time, which is really handy. Okay, next thing. Up here in the timeline settings, we've got our counter. Now you have to make sure that's set to bars and beats. If it's set to minutes and seconds, then we can't really work with musical notes. Minutes and seconds can be useful for working with film or it can be useful for mastering where beats and bars aren't very important, but we're gonna stick with bars and beats for now. Uh, over here on the right hand side, we've got more grid settings. Now this is an important one, you need to have the word grid highlighted because if it's not, then all the grid lines disappear and you don't really know where the beats are. So click that and all the grid lines will be visible on screen. Just to the right of that is a drop down menu where it chooses the value of the grid. And that means how many little slices each bar or beat is divided up into. We want to choose eighth notes I think for this. We're going, to, we're going to change that in a second, but for now we're going to start with eighth notes and you'll see that half of these grid lines will just vanish. There we go. All right, there's a couple more things we still need to configure before we can start programming. Up here in the top left, there's this little box here and we need to make sure that the word grid is highlighted. When that word grid is highlighted, it means that any notes that you program in with a mouse are going to snap to the grid lines and they'll be perfectly in time. If you've got something else selected like slip, then that basically has no snapping at all. And wherever you put your mouse and click, a note will appear there and it could be out of time. So make sure you've got the word grid selected and that will make sure everything stays in time. Up the top here, we've got our main tools that we're gonna to need. We've got the zoom tool, a trim tool, a selection tool, a grabber tool, and over here is a pencil tool. And that's the one we're gonna to use to put notes in with. I think we're ready to get started now. So with my pencil tool selected, I'm gonna go down here to C1 on beat one here and click. And there I have my first note, it's a kick drum. Then I'll go up here to E1 and I'm gonna put a snare on beat two. Then a kick on beat three, then a snare on beat four. And to hear what that sounds like, I'm gonna press the back button and then I'll press play. 
there we go, a basic beat. Now just to explain why I put those notes where I did, I'm going to grab my selection tool to make it a bit clearer. This is bar one, which is divided up into four beats. Okay, this is, well, this is beat one, this is beat two, this is beat three, and this is beat four. The start of each beat is represented by a slightly darker vertical line. In between those are some really faint lines, and those are the eighth notes in between. So we're going to use those eighth notes now to put in hi-hats. I'm going to grab my pencil tool again, and I'll go down to F sharp one, and I'm going to put a hi-hat on every eighth note. One and two and three and four and. All right, hit the back button, listen to what it sounds like. There you go. The more drum programming you do, the more these beats and subdivisions will start to make sense. But for now, if you just copy what you see me doing on your screen, it'll turn out the same. Now this drum beat is fine, but most dance music actually has four kick drums per bar, one on every beat. So I'm gonna go fill those in as well. There we go. Hit the back button, press play. Now it's starting to sound a bit more like dance music. Okay. Next thing, I'm going to grab my selection tool and I'm going to grab that whole bar and I'm going to press copy, which is just control C like it would be in any other program. Then I'm going to click on the start of bar two and go paste, which is control V. Then I'm going to click on the start of bar three, paste. Start of bar four, paste. Hit the back button, play. Now that might be all you need for your song. Just copy and paste a bunch of those and you know fill in the rest and you've got a song. But there's way more we can do to make this sound more interesting. First thing is I'm going to use the grabber tool and I'm going to change some of these notes. So I'm going to grab the last hi-hat of each bar and I'm going to drag it up and make it an open hi-hat. Like that. Drag it up to A sharp one. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, it's starting to sound a little bit more authentic now. What if I want to spice up the hi-hats? So instead of having maybe I want to have to do short little notes like that on the hi-hat, we actually need to drop the grid into 16th note subdivisions. So I'm going to go up here and choose 16th notes. And now I've got extra vertical lines in here. So each bar is now divided into 16 slices. So let me figure out where I could put them. It's, this one here needs to be a double. So something I forgot to tell you is that G sharp one is actually an alternate hi-hat sound. So I might use that to add some variety. There we go. Okay, let's see how that sounds. Okay, and last thing I'm going to do in this video, I think I want to put a little bit of a drum fill in the last bar. So I'm actually going to delete a bunch of the hi-hats from here. Just grab them and delete them. Okay, now let me figure out a cool fill that we could do here with just the snare drum maybe. Now this last snare drum beat of the bar, I don't need to delete it, I'm just going to shorten it by using the trim tool and shorten it like that so I can fit more in. There we go. I don't need this open hi-hat anymore. And to finish it off, I'm going to have a crash, which is up here on C sharp 2, and a kick with it. So let's hear what it sounds like now. Well, that's as far as we're going to go with it in this video. I hope you found that useful and I hope that now you know where to start in programming drum beats in Pro Tools using a mouse. And if you try this out and you decide that programming drums with a mouse is really not for you, if you'd rather 
play the drums in manually on a keyboard, then I have a video all about that. I also have a video on how to connect your MIDI keyboard to Pro Tools, and even a video on how to create your own custom drum kit sounds using the Expand plugin. As always, if you want to learn more about how to make music, record music, and build musical stuff, start now by subscribing below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.